Hi, welcome. I want to talk about sizing the conductor and overcurrent device for a range. Uh, in a dwelling unit, 12240 RW90 wire, 75 degree termination temperature. I want to talk about sizing the branch circuit. So it's important to remember what the definition is of branch circuit from section zero of the code. Right, a branch circuit's from the final overcurrent device to the point of utilization. So in this case, from our breaker in our panel in a house, because we're in a dwelling unit, to the actual range itself. So we're sizing that wire and that overcurrent device. So there is a special rule in the code book that deals with ranges, uh, branch circuits. It's 8300. Uh, specifically, sub rule one talks about ranges in dwelling units. Now it gives us two options. It says, Eight kilowatts, if you don't exceed 12. So if I have a range and it doesn't exceed eight or 12 kilowatts, then I would count it as eight kilowatts. And B says eight kilowatts plus 40%. Demand exceeding 12 kilowatts. So the code book allows us to apply demand factors to a range because with a range, they're rated in what they would use if everything was on. But with ranges, we know that not all four burners and everything inside the range is all going to be on at the same time. So we get to apply a demand factor and size our wire based off of that. So we have a process we want to follow. What we want to do is if we're dealing with this 17 kilowatt range, we are going to go with item B here. So it tells us we're going to take 8 kilowatts plus 40%, everything exceeding 12. So we're going to go 8 kilowatts plus 40% times, in this case, we would have 5 kilowatts exceeding 12. Now this is going to give us our calculated demand of our range. In this case we do the math and it works out to be 10 kilowatts. So 10 kilowatts is our calculated demand for this range. This is how much our wire is going to be able to have to provide to this range. So we take our 10,000 watts, right, our 10 kilowatts. We need to now turn that into a minimum ampacity or a required ampacity of our conductor. We divide that 10,000 by 240 volts. We want to use the line to line voltage of our range. So we divide by 240. This gives us 41.6 amps. So 41.6 amps is the minimum ampacity of our range conductor. Uh, with this, we're doing RW90. We'll say it is copper. RW90 copper is the conductor we are running. So we take our 46 or 41.6 amps. We're going to go to table two. In this case, we would use the 75 degree column. We're using the 75 degree column because of the 75 degree termination temperature. That gives us a number eight, which is good for 50 amps. Now that we have our conductor, right, that would be the size of our conductor is number eight. Table 13 is going to tell us we would use a 50 amp overcurrent device on that number eight. Perfect. Fantastic. So that's basically the process to size a range. So we have our number eight. We got our 50 amp overcurrent. That's what we want to do. There is one more thing we are going to have to take into account when we are talking about a range. Uh, now, the thing is, we can go to 26744, specifically sub rule 4. Basically, 26744 sub rule 4 tells us if your range or your calculated load of your range, 41.6 is our calculated load, if your calculated load is less than 50 amps, less than 50 amps, that would mean we would have to put it onto a 1450 R. We have to put it onto a specific type of receptacle just so that every house has the same type of 
plug or receptacle for their range. Subrule 5 does permit you a 40 amp OC. See, it does allow you to put a 40 amp OC, but you would still need that 50 amp wire. Uh, in this case, we wouldn't go with the 40 amp OC because that's not big enough. We would go with a 50 amp in our case here. But it's just something to keep in mind if you're ever wiring a range in a dwelling unit. Uh, I hope this was helpful. So what we did, we sized our wire and our OC for our range. Uh, thanks for watching.